So the challenge has been presented and someone wants to know how to make a um, snowflake out of a name. And so I'm gonna go through and show you a few things that you can do to make that happen. Some things that you might not have seen before that you can do that I think are very interesting. And um, I hope that you enjoyed this little short video um, tip and trick on how to create a snowflake out of a name. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my text tool and I'm just gonna click on the screen here. And the first thing that I'm going to do is just type in a name and I'll do my dog's name, Chloe, and um, hit apply. And the first thing that you kind of have to do is pick what type of font you want. Now, when you're doing a design like this, I would highly recommend um, something I mean, you don't have to, but I like the script. Um, I would recommend working with a script font. I do feel like it works really well for something like this. So I'm gonna filter my fonts so that I can bring up my um, script fonts. And I'm gonna try to find one that I like that uses the name Chloe. Now this one's kind of interesting. And the reason for that is because it's kind of tall here, but it's not long. So that might make a unique looking snowflake, but I'm going to go ahead and copy it, create a new design page and paste into here. And I'm going to look for a different one because why not try to work on a couple of them? So um, I can even try something that's kind of like this, that's quite a bit different, but this might be something that somebody's interested in is something a little different. And so let me go ahead and create a new page. I'll copy and paste this. And let's find another font here. And I do feel it's important to do stuff like this um, because you might find that a certain style that you think would work well might not work all that great. And then you'll see it done a different way and you might find that to be the type of font you want. So this one is kind of interesting because it has this C with this long tail. So let's just go back to the first one here and I'm going to go ahead and just um, have it selected here. Now this is where we get into um, creating the snowflake. The first thing um, that I will say is that you want to adjust any of the settings. So the first thing is you bring up the name and then you're going to adjust any of the settings that you want to use for the font. It's very important to do this and get it exactly how you want it. And so like for this, I'm going to come in here and choose like my trims to just be auto and I'm going to say my lock stitches to be around the trim and I'm going to hit apply. I want to make sure that that's already preset um, because I know it's something that I would change and I'll make sure my density is correct. Um, and next I'll look at the kerning. So I will go into like the edit mode of the software for text. So I'll right click on it and just choose edit text. And this is when you would just come in and make any changes like that. It was kind of sticking out a little bit right there. And this E, um, bring it in a little bit closer just so it looks a little bit more uh, like I feel like it should. This, um, the C with the H, typically I would want it to kind of connect. So this is looking pretty good now. So I highly recommend doing that, making any of those changes you can. So now we're getting into the snowflake part and this is actually really simple to do. So there's not a lot that we have to do with this. The first thing we have to do is we need to rotate it 90 degrees. So with it selected, I'm gonna come up here to the top and you can see that I can click on this rotate left 90 degrees. And I do like to have the larger part of the name um, on the bottom and it, it gets smaller and I'll show you why that is. But once I have this at 90 degrees, what I'm gonna do is copy it and paste it. So I'm clicking on copy and paste. That way I have two versions of it right here with that one I just pasted, I'm gonna hit flip horizontal. This is very important. So flip it horizontally. So I click that button and you can see that now it's going a different direction. Now, one of the things that you'll want to kind of know how to do when you're moving an object is you wanna look for the hand. So you can see that there's a 
um, my cursor is an arrow right here. When I go over the letter, it turns to a hand. That's the first thing that you want to make sure you find, is you need to make sure you see that hand there. Next, you're going to hold down, you're gonna left click and hold, and then you're also gonna hold down shift on your keyboard. Let me just show you what happens. If I don't hold down shift, I can go up and down like this, but watch what happens when I hit shift and I start moving if I go up and down. What it does is it keeps it on a straight plane here. So I can go straight over, and I'm gonna make sure that these touch just a little bit right there. Release the mouse click and then release the shift key. So basically what I have is Chloe um, twice here and it's mirror imaged to each other. So that's the first step, okay, is you have to get the text set up the way that you want it and then you need to make a copy of it and you need to mirror image it and move it just like this. So from here we can create the snowflake. So if I select all of it just by clicking and dragging over it with the um, selection tool or I can come over here and click on all items. The next step is pretty simple. We just come up here to this circle template. And we click on circle template here. And what that's gonna do is bring up the circle template dialog window. And what I like to do is I like to change the count to five. So I change the count to five. And now what we do is we start angling it. So I'm gonna hit this down arrow next to angle. And I'm just gonna left click and hold on it. And as I left click and hold on it, my recording software is kind of making it a little bit slower. But you can see that what I'm trying to do is kind of create a star. So it's, um, sorry about that with the recording software, it takes it a little bit longer. But you can see it's starting to form there. And now if we take a look at it, we have offset angle, we have the angle, and we can, um, keep that the same but oh, something happened there there we go now um, the scale that's going to affect um, the size of each of the letters which I don't necessarily want to do um, I might just more be looking at my width and my height so let's just say that, that we'll make it three and hit apply here and you can see what's happening. So you can see that now they're kind of connected to each other. Let's see what happens if we move this, the height a little bit higher. Sorry about that, my software is going a little bit slower um, because I have the recording software on. I was just doing this and it was doing um, it nice and fast. So you can see kind of what's happening here. If you look at this part of the C, um, what I'm kind of trying to pay attention to is right here where they kind of connect. I want to make sure that they're kind of even and they are. So let's go back down to three inches. And what I want you to do is when I hit apply, just watch in here. So we're watching in there. Now you can see that basically it's connected even more. So let's just play around with this a little bit more. 315, hit apply. And you can see that now there's a little bit more spacing. Let's do 3.1. You can see that it's kind of connected on one side but not the other. So all I'm doing here is just trying to find what visually um, looks good to me. Okay, so now I'm at 3.05. Um, let me just go right back down to three, hit apply. I like three and the reason I do is because it's connecting all um, these little parts of that C. So once I have it how I want it, I just press OK. So when I press OK, you can see that what I have now is I have this star created with the name Chloe. And it's not that difficult to do, it's just you know making sure you follow certain steps. So I'm gonna show you this again using the other font. So this is one that's using one that's really tall but not very long, and this is the kind of look you get. Let me go to this one, and 
So we're going to go through these steps again. First thing I'm going to do is make sure that I have my settings correct. So I'm going to do trim, I'm going to do auto, and this is in the text extra tab. And I'm going to lock it around a trim and hit apply. Next I'm going to right click on it and choose edit text. And this is where I'm going to play with the kerning a little bit, making sure that these overlap a little bit, just like that, because I think that this is going to make it look better. This one's a little bit trickier um, because it kind of comes up, but that's okay. And we'll grab this one and we'll move this one in just a little bit, just like that. And you can see that now I kind of have everything kind of you know just nice and situated next thing I'll do is I'll hit my select tool and I need to rotate this 90 degrees so I'll rotate it 90 degrees and from here I need to make a copy of it and I need to make it a mirror image so I'll hit copy and then paste and that makes it a duplicate you can see that I have two of them over here I'm going to make sure that I have that hand symbol. I'm going to left click and hold. And then I'm going to hold down shift on my keyboard and I'm going to drag it over. And at the same time, I'm going to come up here. I'm, I released my left click and the control key. But I'm going to hit this um, flip horizontal so that I get this flip. And that looks pretty good right there. And now I'm ready to make the snowflake. So I'll select it all. And I'll come up here to the circle template, click on it, and I'm going to make sure I only have five of them. And then I'll hit um, apply, which it kind of shows you there's only five. Let me hit this down arrow. I'm just going to hold it down. I'm going to let these things kind of rotate, kind of do its thing. I'll slow it up a little bit, but you can see that now all of these C's are kind of connected. Um, let me just make this a little bit bigger, like maybe five and apply so that gave it a little bit more space I don't necessarily need that much so let me just do 4.5 and let's see what that does so now they're touching but they're not like touching a lot so I like that much better so I can hit OK now and that's gonna load it in and you can see that now I have the word Chloe using that different font so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna undo this because I wanted to show you something else, so I'll hit undo. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this vertical. So now that the, the C is at the top and the E is at the bottom. So I want you to see the difference in what this looks like. So I'll hit the circle template. I'll change it from the default of six to five. And then I'm going to just click and hold on this angle, the down arrow. And you can see that um, now I've got these kind of touching each other. I'll hit OK. And so this is what it looks like done the other way. So I just wanted you to see that you can um, flip it a different direction if you need to. So let's go to the last one just so that we can see this one last time here. So I need to zoom into this first. Um, I need to come up to my text extra properties and I need to choose the trim type auto and a rounded trim just like that and hit apply and next thing I need to do is I need to right click on it and choose edit text and this is when I'm going to start playing around with the kerning a little bit um, just kind of focusing on, on these areas making sure that everything um, is looking like it overlaps well so that looks pretty good right there so let me zoom out a little bit and I need to select it at this point and I need to rotate it 90 degrees. So with it rotated 90 degrees, now I can do a copy and a paste. And this time I'll hit flip horizontal right away. So you can see that it's now flipped and I'm gonna click and drag it holding down shift and I'm going to place this right here. And this is creating a really kind of a cool effect right here. So I'm going to um, left click, hold down shift, I'm going to drag it in a little bit further. I want these to kind of come in a little bit closer to each other. And now they're basically touching each other. And, and that's because I don't want there to be too much of a gap in between here. But you can 
kind of see where we're going with this. You can see that this is creating a unique look. So I'm going to select it now and I'm going to come up to circle template and I'm going to change it to five. I just like five. Um, you can do it with six or a different value. And now I'm going to hit this arrow right here down and I'm going to try to get these closer together and get them in the center just a little bit more the recording software really kind of makes this go a lot slower so I do apologize that looks pretty good right there I might be able to take this and maybe go down to 3.8 and hit apply so that these get closer together let's go even closer than that 3.5 Let's see what that does that's kind of neat let's go even a little bit 3.25 hit apply and that's kind of creating a really neat effect right there so I really like that a lot so I'm gonna hit OK at this point and now you can see that this one is really kind of neat so this is a good thing to keep in mind this font right here Rhapsody is a pretty cool font for this now we can stop here and this is ready to go I can save it or we can do some other things and let's just see what we might be able to do with this um, first I'm gonna select it all and kind of zoom in a little bit um, zoomed out just a tad bit there is this thing called nap control that we have and so if I wanted to put this on a towel for instance um, I could click this and I could choose, I want it to be a quarter of an inch larger. Um, I could do it a little bit less than that if I wanted to. But let's just go ahead and we'll keep it at outlines. So I click this icon right here for nap control. It brings this up and I'm doing it in inches. If you don't see it in inches, that means your ruler up at the top is not set to inches. So you'll want to make sure you do that. Um, I'm going to hit OK. And when I hit OK, you can see what happens is that it actually puts in this stitch right here um, that will sew first in the design. So let's say that the towel was a lighter blue color. I could change it to that color and you can see that now um, it's doing those stitches. Um, they'll take place before the word so that if there's a nap in the towel, it will hold it down so that those stitches won't poke through. Now, once I have this, um, basically this is just a fill stitch, right? So I could do other things with it. Like maybe you want to turn this into a lace design. So let's just go ahead and convert this. I could go right into converting to auto lace just by clicking this icon right here. So let's go ahead and click on it. And this might take it a second. Hopefully these outlines are pretty good because um, that will affect the outcome. So there we go. Now I have turned this into a freestanding lace design. And that was really easy to do. And the first thing, again, I'm just going to hit undo and show you this really quick. Um, if I get this back to just the snowflake, if I select all of the items there, I click on nap control, do it at a quarter of an inch here, hit OK. The reason I'm doing this is because this is creating an outline at a quarter of an inch around all of the lettering. So by using that nap control, I'm getting this great outline that I can then take this and just convert it right over to auto lace. And it's going to use this outer perimeter for that auto lace. So I hope that that makes sense. Um, and so now what I have is a freestanding lace design. And so I wanted to just show you that you can do, you can go even further um, with these kind of names. And I could change the color of this and it might help to change the color so we can kind of see it a little bit different. Um, there's that. We do the green click on the green and you can see so you could do Christmassy colors you could do colors that are more in line with um, 
like kind of ice and snow, if you will. And you can change all of these properties. So I could change the background color of this. And all I'm doing is just clicking on these individual colors here and changing them slightly. So I could change this to a different blue and I can make this one that light blue color again. So that's starting to look a little bit more wintry and I really like that. So now I can just save the design if I want, but you know me, I like to go a little bit further and just show you some other things that you might wanna do with this because it is a lace design. Um, what if we wanted to kind of make this into an ornament that could be hung on a Christmas tree. Um, this is something about the Floriani software that I just love, um, how easy it is to do some things here. So first thing I'm gonna do is I selected everything and I'm gonna just rotate it a little bit here. Oh, that was my zoom tool, I apologize. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna rotate it a little bit and I'm gonna try to get it kind of centered up at the top so I'll release it now you can see that this is looking a little bit more like a star if you will uh, that one a little bit down here so this is pretty close right here so what I can do if I want to make this a freestanding um, lace design is it's really not that difficult to do what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this artwork tool and I'm going to focus the part to hang right here. So I'm going to left click just kind of right here and I'm going to left click once um, kind of in the center. I'm looking at this point here. I'm going to click right there and then I'm going to come back in and I'm going to click right here and I'll right mouse click. And what I've done is just created a piece of artwork. So you can see that that's right here a piece of artwork and the reason I just did it as a triangle is because I'm going to come into the edit mode so I'm going to click on shape edit and I'm going to select this point right here and I'm going to come up here and just choose symmetrical when I choose symmetrical you can see that it's going to make it kind of a symmetrical um, point here so if I click and drag one of these anchor or um, just these little handlebars here it'll kind of stretch it out on both sides and it just kind of creates a nice little curve and one of the things i'm going to do is i'm going to come down even further into this piece here so that it definitely will get overlapped well so there's a tool in the floriani software that is designed to work as freestanding lace and so this is going to be um, just another little addition that you can learn a little bit more about lace here. I'm going to select it with the select tool so it's out of edit mode. And there's this icon right here called mesh steel. So this is designed to be a freestanding lace satin stitch. So if we click on it, like I just did um, right there, I just left clicked on it. It is created this steel satin stitch right here. and. If we took a look at this, you'll see that when it stitches out, I'm gonna back up a little bit here. I'm gonna slow this down and I'm gonna hit play. And I want you to see, um, it might take a second to get to that point because I was just dragging it in here. So give it just a second here. Okay, right here. Now, it, this is gonna go back and forth um, creating these run stitches and the reason it's doing this is it's creating a base for these satin stitches that are going to come later and what it's going to um, do is it's going to lock it all together so now you've got these little runs going back and forth so everything is just locking into each other I'm going to speed this up a little bit here um, so it's going to go back and forth everything is just going to get kind of locked together and then the satin stitch will go over the top. So what we're doing is just creating a freestanding lace, um, kind of half circle, three quarter circle, whatever you want to say, this little loop for hanging this, to be able to hang this as a freestanding ornament. So 
it's going to create that and when it's done this will stand on its own as a freestanding lace satin stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on the magnifying glass, bring it back. The one thing that I would do in this situation is now I would select that piece I just created and all I have to do is move it to the first. I will actually let that stitch out very first in the design. So I'm going to hit this little icon move to first and now when I click off it, you can see that it's underneath all of these stitches. So all of this that's going to come later is going to lock it in place. So now I have a freestanding lace design and everything is ready to go. And so all we need to do at this point is save the design and we're, we're good to go. So with a lace design, a freestanding lace design, just so you know, all you would do is hoop a piece of um, wet and gone, uh, it, which is water soluble stabilizer, not topper, but stabilizer. And I usually do two pieces of it, so I'll hoop two pieces of that. And you just stitch this design right onto it, and when you're done um, stitching the design, you take it out of the hoop, you cut around the excess off, you know, getting maybe a quarter of an inch away from the stitches and then you just submerge it in water and I like to use lukewarm water and you just kind of rub it a little bit and all of that stabilizer will go away and you'll be left with nothing but the stitches a freestanding lace design so I hope that you've enjoyed this I went into a lot of things in this I wasn't necessarily planning on going into I hope you appreciate that so if you do make one of these I really do hope that you'll share it and just post it on social media feeds. Um, you can go to Total Control Software Users and um, if you're not already part of it, definitely want to check that out. And if you make this, go ahead and post an image of what you created. I love to see what you create um, from these little lessons. So until next time, this is DJ Anderson and thanks for watching this video.